to one rates of change. Now we're going to start this course with the calculus portion. We're first going to start with unit one on rates of change. Now remember this page, you're going to see this page every time you open up a lesson. Okay, so the first title here will be what unit you're on. Okay, so here it is, unit one, rates of change. And then it will list all of the lessons that are included in this unit. As you can see, we have six lessons. And today, in red, we're on lesson one on rationalizing functions. Before we actually move into learning about calculus and uh, learning all the, the skills that are involved in calculus, we're going to first take a look at some essential skills. Some of those essential skills will involve rationalizing functions. Now remember back to grade 11 or grade 12 when you looked at radical expressions. Well, what exactly is a radical expression? A radical expression has a square root symbol. Okay, so let's take for instance, if you're looking at our first example of a radical expression. So we have a square root of 3, for instance, okay? Um, it could be something like square root of um, A, okay? So it could be algebraic. These are examples of one-term radical expressions. Now, there can also be two-term radical expressions. So um, a binomial or even a trinomial. For instance, if you had 2 plus the square root of 5, that is a two-term radical expression. Two radicals that are separated by a plus sign. We could also have a negative um, 3 plus the square root of 8. Um, even things that have uh, an integer in front of the square root as well are considered radical expressions. Let's take, for instance, if we just go over here. If we had 2 and then square root of 5. So these are all examples of radical expressions. Now sometimes it is useful for us to rationalize the denominator of a radical expression. Now why would we want to do something like that? Why not just leave it alone? Well, let's take for instance if you had a rational expression. Now it's important for us to keep those separately. A rational expression, okay, is something that is a fraction. Okay, my writing is a bit messy today. Okay, let's see. So the term rationalizing comes from the root rational. For rational expression, and a rational expression is a fraction whereas a radical has a square root symbol. Okay, so let's say for instance if you had an expression such as, let's take for instance here, the square root So we had the square root of 3 over the square root of 5, for instance. So here we have a radical as well as a rational expression. And in cases, it is easier for us to divide by an integer rather uh, than dividing by a radical number. Okay, so this is when we would rationalize. So let's recall from functions that when we multiply two radicals together, it cancels out the radical symbol. There are many reasons for this. Let's take, for instance, if we had the square root of 2 and we multiply it by itself by the square root of 2, then what we would get is just simply... 2. way that we can think of this. Another way that we can think of this 
um, is if we had two and we changed, remember when we learned about exponents, that the square root symbol um, is also the same as saying that it is two to the exponent of a half, okay? I apologize for my writing. Um, it's two to the exponent half, and we multiply that by another two to the exponent a half. If I can get this, there we go. Um, then we can say that by laws or rules of exponents that we can keep the base, which is two, and add your exponents. When we have a half plus another half, it is simply just one. So another way of looking at this is by using exponents. So when you have two radicals multiplied to itself, it is simply just the root and the number, or the number that is underneath the square root symbol, okay? So let's move into our first example, our real example. So example one, what we're gonna do is simplify this expression by rationalizing the denominator. Again, when we rationalize the denominator, our goal is to get rid of the square root symbol in the denominator, okay, because it is sometimes easier to work with when we have an integer. Taking a look at our first example, what are we going to multiply the denominator, denominator by? So remember, when we multiply a radical by itself, it cancels out the radical symbol, okay? So in this case, what you're going to look at is the radical, uh, the square root of 5, and just leaving alone the 4. So what I would first do is, well, I'm going to rewrite this again, the square root for the square root of 5, okay? I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 5. But remember, I don't want to change my expression. And in order to do that, I can multiply it by, well, what if I multiplied it by 1? If I multiplied it by 1, does it change my expression? No, it does not. And in doing so, Remember, 1 can be anything. So what I'm going to do is actually multiply it by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, which is also equal to 1, correct? Of course, it is equal to 1. Okay, so in doing that, I don't actually exchange or change my expression. However, I can manipulate it. So in this end result, I'm multiplying 3 times the square root of 5, okay, or times, you can picture a 1 in front here, it's just 4, and then the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, remember, a little side note here, is equal to just 5, okay? So our end result, then, is simply 3 square root of 5 over 20. And I always look at it and see if there's anything else that I can do. Can I simplify it further? Can I simplify the, the fraction? Can we divide 3 into 20? Is there anything that I can do to simplify this further? And in this case, no. So that is our final answer. Okay, let's take a look at example number 2. Simplify the radical expression, this one, by rationalizing the denominator. So what we have here is you'll notice in the denominator we have a radical expression that has two terms. So what we're going to need to do is rationalize it uh, by multiplying it by its conjugate. Okay, And remember, when we multiply the denominator by its conjugate, we also want to multiply the numerator as well so that we don't ex change the expression. Okay, All we're doing is manipulating it. So first thing that we should do is note what the... Um, conjugate of the radical is. So the radical, if we just want to highlight here, okay, let's take a look at this, okay, the radical is 2 root 6 plus 3, okay, so, or it's con and it's conjugate then, okay, I know what you're going to say, it's just root 6 plus 3. But we can't just drop the integer that's in front of the radical. So we have to say that it's 2 root 6, and again, minus, okay, it's the opposite sign, 3. Okay, so that's our conjugate. What we have to do now is multiply the numerator as well as the denominator by its conjugate. 
again, we're going to multiply 2 root 6. minus 3 over 2 root 6 minus 3, okay? Multiplying the 5 by each term. Let's do the numerator first. So we have is 10 root 6 minus 15 all over it's going to keep brackets. So the 2 times the 2 is 4. Root 6 times root 6 is simply just 6. You can write it out, or if you can just do it in your head, that's fine too. Minus 9. Okay. I don't know what that is. Oh dear. What's going on? So something I just wanted to make note as well, remember that when we multiply by its conjugate, okay, the radical, you notice that it's the opposite sign. Now the reason for that, when we actually foil it out or, or we multiply the binomials together, these opposite signs will make the middle terms cancel out. Okay, so it makes it simplified for us. So what it does is then not only does it get rid of the radical symbol, um, it simplifies it so we don't have that middle term and then we can just multiply the end terms. So really you're just uh, multiplying the first terms and then multiplying the last terms to itself, um, which is why we actually multiply it by its conjugate, which is the opposite sign. Okay, okay, so let's go back to this. That was just a little side note that I wanted to include in there for you. Um, so what we have here is 24. So what I've got is 24 minus 9. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to need a new page. So let's go and add a new page here. Let's see. Add a new page. Okay, so we had on the numerator was uh, 10 root 6. I just want to re rewrite this so that you can take a look at it. 10 root 6 minus 15 all over, now 24 minus 9 was 15, okay? It looks like I can simplify further. I can actually factor out a 5 in the numerator, which will give us 2 root 6 minus 3 all over 15, and I can cancel. And it leaves me with 2 root 6 minus 3, all over 3, and that is our simplified um, and reduced answers. answer. So remember that with these video lessons, you can always go back, review them, and you can even try the questions out yourself. So you can pause them, try them, and then push play to see if you, if you came up with the same result. Now, at the end of each lesson, I'm going to have these check your learning. So basically, it's just a multiple choice question just to see if you've been paying attention, which I'm sure you have, um, just to see if we're headed in the right track, okay? And maybe if you didn't get the right answer, that you could go back and you can review the, the lesson again or even um, use other resources. Now, this question is uh, it wants us to rationalize the denominator of root uh, negative root 7 over 4 root 5. What value should the denominator and uh, numerator be multiplied by? Okay, so think about your answer. You can pause the video now in order to make your decision. Okay, and the final answer is B. There we go. And I hope you got that. That concludes our lesson today. This is Unit 1, Rates of Change, and Lesson 1 on um, rationalizing functions. And we'll see you next time. Major.